This is NASA T-38 training jets, and they are kicking off this parade. Take a look. Away, right on time. Yeah, this is our joint color guard leading us off today, and they will be followed by the TSU band, the Ocean. And this is at Smith and Lamar that this parade is getting started. They had to extend the route by a couple of blocks because so many of us wanted to come out and be a part of it. The Joint Color Guard getting a warm welcome here in the streets of downtown Houston. And we got the mayor on the front of it and the players right behind him. How about, look at these guys. And here goes the confetti. Up. Here goes the confetti. Okay, the trophy. Oh, there's the confetti we've been waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> we had to pause from our broadcast to take our own photos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about that? They kind of came on strong with that first group with Springer, Keichel, Brightman and company, the mayor involved. That's a pretty good way to get it That's started. That's an awesome way to get it started. And, and you know, we were talking about the, the Houston Rockets parade. It was delayed. Uh, back in 94, but no delay here. Everybody, everybody made it on time. Here we go with the second big fire truck. All right, so we've answered one of the big questions. What will Josh Reddick wear right. in the parade? <laughs> He is not, in fact, wearing the star-spangled Speedo oh, that good. became famous. Yeah. He is fully dressed. He's yeah. got the big orange cowboy hat on and, of course, the WWE championship belt. <laughs> He's got it yeah, high above his head. Absolutely. Huh? Modesty prevailed. I could not have blamed him, though, for wearing this Speedo, considering the temperatures. And here we go. You guys are going to remember this for a long time, and I know at some point when they do get their championship ring. Okay, here's There's Jose. our guy. There's Jose. There you go. You know, and you you talked about it earlier, Roger, that you grew up in this community too. So yeah. it's just fascinating to watch the crowds all along the streets here. Okay, I don't know. Well, again, what, what uh, is re really fascinating to me stuff. is all of the people in the parking garages. Who would have ever imagined that everybody would take to the parking garages to get a bird's eye view of the players coming by? But here they are, headed down to City Hall now, down Smith Street, just past the Chevron. There's the Chevron uh, overpass, uh, the pedestrian overpass. Look at all of the people that have now pushed their way out into the street to get as close as they can to the players to wave hello and give them a salute and thank them for the big victory. I back up a Cy Young year with the kind of season he had this year. Um, don't take for granted, Keiko had that neck issue and was out. Right. Yeah. And all of a sudden, yeah. he's back to form when you have to have it against the Yankees. There he is, front and center. You back that up with Justin Verlander. A credit again to Jim Crane because he was willing to. The man who saved Game 7 of the World Series, number 50, Charlie Morton. The catcher, number 16, Brian McCann. He played everywhere. He led the team in RBIs. Number nine, Marwin Gonzalez. Your DH, number 11, Evan Gaddis. We only need one word next for the next guy. Let's hear it for Josh Reddick. <laughs> Number 10, Yuli Gurriel. How many big hits did this guy have? Number two, Alex Bregman. The only guy with two rings for game seven of the World Series, Carlos Correa.
three simple words, MVP, Jose Altuve. He's been with the Astros for the last five years, started game one of the ALCS and the World Series, the big lefty, Dallas Keuchel. <laughs> to win game two, there were a lot of big stars. He hit the home run to win it in game two, then he hit one in game three, game four, game five, game seven, the World Series MVP, George Springer.